CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The early bird, we are told from childhood on catches the worm. This is good advice, but only for birds. Worms, by inference, should sleep late. Now, this is perfectly obvious and rather well known. However, there is a problem of identity. You see, most people really don't know who they are. Birds or worms. That's why, for so many of us, the timing is always off. He killed her. Shouldn't he be arrested? Arrested? Very much. He doesn't exist. What are you saying? She don't exist. He's a television show. TV. They're not real people. They are, too. Our mystery drama, Fan Mail, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Terry Keene and Ann Williams. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If you'd really like a big car, but you really think you ought to buy a small car, maybe what you ought to buy is a mid-sized car. To be specific, a Buick Century Custom. The Century Custom, you see, offers a lot of the room and comfort you look for in a big car. And the trim size and the V6 engine give you a lot of the benefits of a small car. But the Century Custom has one more thing going for it. It's a Buick. And no matter what size car you're looking for, you just can't do much better than that. How does your laxative work? Many brand name laxatives contain ingredients that expand in your stomach. That's how they work. We know a medicine that works differently. It's in the X-Lax pill. Overnight, the X-Lax pill gently stimulates your system's own regular rhythm. Stimulates your system for relief in the morning. No surprises. Just relief in the morning. That's the X-Lax pill. Try it tonight with confidence. For occasional use only as directed, X-Lax pills. God, said Mr. Leo Tolstoy, sees the truth, but waits. We, on the other hand, being considerably less than divine, are apt to register impatience, which sometimes erupts within us and impels us to a course of action which we usually will have cause to regret. However, all this is the price we pay for being human, or at any rate, one of the many prices. Listen, somebody is very angry. I want that money. What money? Hand it over. You'll only drink it up. I said hand it over. No, I worked for that money. Now you give it to me. It's mine. You give me that money before I... Look, I laid one hand on me. One finger. I'll call the police. You just try it. Get out of here. This is my house. Your house. Who pays the rent? Oh, somebody's been steaming you up. I said get out. Who? Who is he? Nobody. You're a liar. Don't you ever hit me again. Who's the guy? There's no one. You're lying. No, I made a vow to love, honor, and obey. I'll beat it out of you. No, not this time. Put down that phone. You take one more step and I'll call the cops. I said put down that phone. Look, I'm warning you. No, let go of me. Let you go. drop that phone. No, let go. Operator. Call the cops on me, will you? Operator. Oh. Margo. Margo, get up. Come on, come on, get up. You, you don't have to give me all the money, just some of it. Operator. Look, may, may, maybe 50 bucks, huh? and, and I'll go away. That won't bother you anymore. I, 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 know, I know I said that to you before, but this time I mean it. Margo? Operator. Margo? All right, kids, all right, that's the thing. <laughs> Whew, did I fall okay? Oh, 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 oh. Like a dying swan, Eleanor. <laughs> 
Uh, I think I was a little too vicious, Peyton. Oh, no, sorry. You were perfect. <laughs> Felt like a wild beast. They're going to love you out there, baby. <laughs> I'll be the most hated man in America. <laughs> and that's love. You know, those women watching, they enjoy watching a virile brute. Your <laughs> fortune is made. You'll be responsible for at least ten million dreams tonight. Well, how long am I going to be in the hospital? <laughs> how long? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh... Uh, you're not uh, going to the hospital, Eleanor. Not going to the hospital? Oh, I understood a long period of treatment and convalescence would enable us to use a medical locale. I could be involved with the problems of nurses and interns. Yeah, yes, that was the idea, but it's been, uh... It's been, uh... Changed, Eleanor. What's been changed? You know, the storyline. How has it been changed? Well, like this uh, fight you just had with Joe, well, tomorrow we open with a doctor and uh, the doctor pronounces you dead. What? Well, Joe, Joe just killed you. Joe killed me? Yes, in this terrible fit of rage. Then... Then I'm dead? I mean, Margot's dead? Well, that's what I've been telling you. And I'm off the show. <laughs> kind of stand to reason. After 12 years. 12 years of... Well, I'm going to see Bill Harrison. Well, Bill is in Hollywood. Well, I'll be on the next plane. Look, Eleanor, the decision was made a month ago. You... Oh. I see. <laughs> and nobody had the guts to tell me. Well, now, honey, it would have been like the Battle of the Bulge around here. This way, things ran smoothly. Are you going to continue on the show, Perry? He's been getting the fan mail. He's uh, put the juice back in the ratings. Are you going to continue, Perry? Oh, darling, they asked me. They asked you. Who got you on this show originally? Eleanor, we've been around long enough to understand... Oh, and you knew about this. You did, didn't you? Yes, yes, I knew. <laughs> you didn't tell me? It was told to me in strict confidence. Confidence? But I'm your wife. Now, oh, Eleanor. Eleanor, where are you oh, going? Out. Eleanor. Well, take your hands off me. You've no reason to get Look, us. Look, if I stay here one more minute, I'll... I'll kill Eleanor, you. Eleanor, you know this happens all the time. Go. I'll probably kill you anyhow. Hey, give me a tuna salad with lettuce, and you got any chicken soup left, Irma? Irma, what's the matter with you? Hey, Irma, you okay? Hey, hey, what you crying about, huh? <laughs> Last time I seen somebody stand there crying like you are, quiet with, with just the tears running down their cheeks, it was because somebody died. Oh, did someone die? Margo. Margo, you... Who, who is Margaret? Joe killed her. Joe? Her husband. Oh, oh, oh. Were they friends of yours? She was. She was my dearest friend for 12 years. How I admired that woman. She was like a sister to me. And Joe killed her, huh? Well, he would go to jail. He maybe get the chair. Uh, that he's back now, you know, I think. Well, it's my only consolation. That animal must be destroyed. When did it happen? When? Just five minutes ago. Five minutes ago? I saw it with my own two eyes. But you've been here since noon. How could you... I saw it happen on the TV. What? You mean a guy murders his wife and he's on TV? Wait a minute. Millions of people saw it happen. Well, how could this... Carlos, it was on the program. The program? Crossroads. Crossroads. Cross, those for crying out loud. <sighs> for a second there, you had me going. You're talking about some silly soap opera. Is that what you're talking about? She's dead, Carlos. She's dead. Listen, Erdemar, you... Ah, look, I am sorry. But she was a saint. Why did he kill her? Irma, I don't know. He's the brakes. The chair is too good for him. Look, we're going to have the early supper trade right away. You think you can kind of... Uh, Oh, pull yourself together. No, I had... Well, maybe yeah. since you feel so bad, you want to go home? No. I'll carry on. You called for a tuna salad, lettuce, tomato, mayo on toast, a cup of chicken noodles. Ah, that's my Irma. 
that's how Margo would want it. Hey, Carlos. Yeah, baby. Uh, listen, I'm going to take my half hour off, okay? Sure, it's quiet now. I'm going to bring the TV into the back room. Oh. Oh, sure, yeah, why, why not? And, uh, I don't want to be disturbed. Okay. Yesterday, they caught him. They caught who? Joe. Joe. Joe, who killed his wife, Margo. Oh, yeah, 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 Joe, sure. The cops have him. He's in the station house. Ah, that's good. And here's where it begins. Where, what begins, room? Justice. The long march of justice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, where, that, that's, that's fine. Huh? The only way her death will have any meaning. Who's dead? Whose death are we talking about? Margot's death. Oh, yeah, Margot. Yeah, that's right, Margot. You see, yeah. Carlos, Joe must pay. The truth or no, I agree. He has violated man's law and God's commandment. Hey, that's a heavy bundle to carry. You know, I thought about it. Margot had to die. Oh, she did? She, she had to die for you and for me. Well, listen, I mean, she didn't have to die on my account, exactly. Oh, but she did. We have become a uh, casual. Is that the word? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I remember reading it. Casual in our acceptance of sin. Isn't that so? Well, uh, we have, believe me. I believe you. And we forget the laws, both human and divine. And so, a sacrifice must be made. Yeah. The what? A sacrifice. You know, the ancient heathens made sacrifices all the time. Is that a fact? Yeah. So they could feel close to God. You understand? Irma, I see you're and losing so me. so Margot was sacrificed in order that we should pause and remember right from wrong and punish the transgressor. And that's what's going to happen today. Well, sure, come with you, Irma. I'll be ready to go back to work 3.30 sharp. Okay, Mr. Davis, now let's hear your story. My story? Well, uh, I, I, I came home, Lieutenant. What time was this? Oh, it uh, must have been sometime after 5 o'clock. That's not true. Go on. I went around the back. I had mud on my shoes, so... Well, the first thing I noticed, the, the kitchen door was open. That seemed strange, so I... I went in and... Yeah? Well, there she was, laying on the floor. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's all covered with blood. I, I kneeled down beside her. And she was dead. It isn't true. I could see the ring was missing from her finger, the gold wedding ring that I gave her, and the watch. Now, that was gone from her wrist. You took them. You took them yourself. The purse was laying right there on the floor, and it was empty, but she'd been paid just that day, and it should have had over $100 in it. You stole it. Then uh, you believe some intruder killed her for her money. Well, that's what I have to believe. Don't ask him what he believes. He's a liar. He's a murderer. Now we have to ask you this question. Where were you at 4 o'clock, which has been set as the time of your wife's death? Where was I? You were there, in the house. You killed her. What I'm asking is, do you have an alibi? He was there. Well, let me see it. Uh, around three, I stopped off at Jerry's bar. It's a lie. He was in the How house. How long did you stay there? Oh, let me see. Uh, it must have been until about ten minutes to five. You sure of that? Yeah, I'll tell you how I know. We were waiting there to hear the results of the seventh race on the radio. And then? You actually believe him? Well, then, Don't. then I walked home. I mean, it's only a couple of blocks. You can ask Jerry. Jerry? Jerry's a receiver for stolen goods, a fence, a dope pusher. He and Joe must have been together in one shady deal after another. How can you believe Jerry? If there's anything I can do to help catch this wild animal. Ah, yeah, shut up. That, that, that killed... That thing who was my wife. You killed her. You killed her. All right, Joe, so that's all. That's all. You mean I can go? Just be available for questioning in case you need it. He's walking out. You can't do that, Lieutenant. He's the killer. Don't let him get away with it. You can't. You can't. Hey, 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 Irma. What is it? What's the matter? He's going to get away with it. He's going to get away with murder. You know, I can hear you screaming all the way out front. Get a hold of yourself. He's getting away with murder. Now, Irma, he, 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 no. He has to pay for it. Somebody has to make him pay for it. Do you remember a popular song, Somebody Loves Me, I Wonder Who? Well, 
Joe in the TV script or Perry in real life could rewrite those lyrics to Somebody Hates Me. Irma's emotions have been steamed to the boiling point, but don't jump to conclusions too quickly. Act two in just a few moments. I know is what I read in the papers, said Mr. Will Rogers. Well, that's what he knew. On the other hand, what do we know? For so many of us, all we know is what we see on a screen, in a motion picture theater, or at home on our television. These moving shadows have become our only reality. Well, what is reality, anyhow? Hey, now, I'm a baby. The first thing you want to do is just be calm. How can I be calm? How about if I make you a nice cup of tea? He is getting away with murder. Maybe I put the the little shot in it? How can they permit it? Permit what? He murdered Margo. Are you sure? Am I sure? I saw it happen on the television. Okay. Now the police pick him up, and what do they do? How about it? They let him go. What? What, did they put him on the grill? Grill. (laughs) Some grill. Butter wouldn't melt in that homicide lieutenant's mouth. Uh, what do you expect? You can't have no police brutality. You know what I mean? How would he look on TV? But they let him go. Why? Well, it's because maybe they didn't have nothing on him. But he did it, and then he emptied her purse. He took the cash. He tore the ring off her finger and the watch off her wrist. Now, Irma, look. You see, they figured they need the evidence. You can't arrest the guy without the evidence now, can But he's guilty. Don't they know he's guilty? Sure they do. What do you think? They're stupid. You've got to be careful, Irma. You put this guy on trial without you got the real evidence. You know what happens? The jury has to say not guilty. And then he's out of it. You, you can't never try him again. Why not? Because he's what they call uh, uh, double jeopardy. <laughs> You see, you you can't try a guy for the same thing twice. But they ain't even going to try him once. They are, Irma. Baby, believe me, they are. Are you sure, Carlos? Oh, they're just giving him rope. You know why? So so he can hang himself. Is that what it is? Sure. You think they want to let him get away with murder? See, they... Now, don't you feel better? Yeah, Carlos. I feel much better. Eleanor? Mm, well, look who's here. How'd the audition go? I don't know. I didn't go. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. <laughs> Maybe I've got a new career. Writing lyrics. You're drunk. No, no I wouldn't say that. I've had a drink or two, but still got a ways to go before I could actually be considered drunk. Why don't you go to the audition? To tell you the truth, I was very busy. Oh, doing what? Thinking. And I uh, came to some very interesting conclusions. Do you care to hear them? Eleanor, now listen to me. You've got to get hold of yourself. Oh, no, do I? Your entire career is going down the drain. Yes. <laughs> That's Probably true. Then why can't you realize... Let me tell you what I really realize. Oh, wait. Excuse me? Have to refill this little glass? Pour you one? No, thank you. Ooh, more for me. Now, where were we? Ah, my career going down the drain. You know who pulled the plug? You did. I did. You helped them cut my throat. What did I do? You were part of the plot. What plot? For one solid month, I was given a dummy set of scripts to read while all along a new storyline was being created. And you were part of it. Would it have made sense for both of us to be out of work? One of us has to have a job. Well, you made sure that one of us was you. Suppose you knew. What could you have done about it? I have friends at the agency with the client, the network. I have Favors, I could have called Eleanor, in. you had friends, and you've run out of favors. That is a lie. You're washed up. How dare you? I dare because I love you. Oh, love? Yes. 
you're not the toast of Broadway anymore, Eleanor. George Bernard Shaw is dead. You can't play Joan of Arc any longer. And you've got to forget you're a great actress because nobody cares. Well, I have got a public. They care. Is that a fact? You were just chilled off on a soap opera. Now, who's losing sleep over it? Life and the world go on and you've got to change. Change? Yes. You have to stop doing producers a favor by acting in their shows. <laughs> You have to think in terms of character parts. You've got to sharpen your delivery. <laughs> you! You presume to lecture me. I taught you everything you know. What were you? A cheap, slapstick comedian. I made an actor out of you. Well, at least I was ready, willing, and able to change. Are you... Well, you were always jealous of my success. Oh, come on. You to destroy me. You plotted to get me off that show. I'm going to kill you. Eleanor. Yes. I'll Eleanor, put down that knife. No. Eleanor. No, you, you deserve to die. Eleanor, for God's sake, put it down. Now, stop that. Let go of my arm. Now, let go. Drop that knife. Let go. No, I said drop it. Let that knife fall from your hand. No, I have to kill you. Drop it. It's gotten into you. I'm drunk. Picked up that knife. You were actually going to stab me what happened to me when I get drunk? I uh, hate you so much when I'm drunk. I want to kill you. Eleanor. I don't know what I'm doing. Why? Yeah. Why? Because you're no good. Eleanor. You're, you're younger than I am. You can still play romantic leads. Oh, come on, darling. I'm, I'm washed up. No, you're not. You said so. well, What I meant was... It's the liquor. You've got to give it up. I need it. Eleanor, you could still get almost any part you want. I noticed you said almost. Well, it's just that the producers here and on the coast, they're, they're, they're scared of no, you. That's a lie. This, this is a plot. All right, all right. It's a plot. You admit it. There's a terrible plot. Yeah. And you know whose it is? Nature's. Nature's, because she schemes against all of us and makes us grow older. With every passing year, she drains the color from our face and sucks the marrow out of our bones. Nature, she's behind it. I'm tired, Terry. I want to go to sleep. All right, but promise me you'll go on the wagon. Uh, I'll think about it. Mm, promise. Please. No, you've got to promise. Don't make me promise. Try. Try. Okay, sure, all right. Uh, that I can do. I, I can try. Here I want a meatloaf special, one roast turkey white meat, and a chef salad. Irma? Irma, what are you staring at? You lied to me, Carlos. I lied to you? Would I ever do a thing like that? You lied. Where? When? You said the cops were really after Joe. Oh, where well, they are? Well, they're not. You said Joe would pay for murdering Margot. Well, he will. He won't. He even got a promotion at the factory, and he's going to marry the foreman's sister. Well, Irma, what so I there mean, was what... no justice. He got away with it. Nobody gets away with murder. Joe did. But his conscience, you see. His conscience, it's killing. I don't see that. It's going to come up and haunt him, you see. Maybe five, ten years from now, someday it's got to come up. I mean, he, he'll really have a lot to lose. Like, maybe he was going to take over the whole factory and become a millionaire. And boom! Suddenly, he is stripped of everything. I don't believe that. Okay. But the fact is that there is nothing we can do about it. Is that what you believe? What do you mean, Is that what I believe? You believe that people should be permitted to get away with murder. What? No, I don't think... To... Marco was an angel. You don't know. You could never know what was in that woman's heart. And this bum... He just murders her? Hey, come on, Irma. It's just a, just a story. I looked into that woman's eyes, and she was a person. I mean, a real, live person. And that Joe. Oh, no, Carlos. He will not get away with it. 
Not while I have one breath left in my body. Oh, now, Are you now, wanted you a meatloaf could... special, a roast turkey, white meat, and a chef's salad? Irma, I wish we'd get over this thing. I'm sorry it bothers you, Carlos. I won't talk about it in front of you anymore. There you are, Perry. Oh, sorry I'm late. Ah, it's nothing serious. Well, shall I? Shall I order for you? Just ginger ale, be fine. Oh, 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 I see. What do you see? One lush enough in the family? No, no, no. no. Don't, don't, don't take a fan. No, I can't afford to. Because I want to ask you a favor. The answer is no. You don't even know what it is. But I do. You want me... To find a job for Eleanor. Why is the answer no? The answer, my friend, lies in that bottle. I know. Oh, come on. How could you ask me to take a chance? She drinks because she doesn't have a job. Now, if somebody would just trust her with a part, it would be the most fantastic therapy in the world. Perry, honey, I'm not running a sanitarium. I know that, Peyton, but look what I've done for Crossroads. Look at what it's done for you. All right, I'm a star. So, I want a favor. Perry, in our world, you become a star overnight. You know that. But you may find out you can also become an unstar. Just as quickly. Look, I know that she can't come back on our show, but Billy has two other soaps. And he does specials. Now, he listens to you when it comes to casting. Because, baby, he knows he can trust me. Hey. Please. She has to have a job. That's her problem. No, it's my problem. Look, she's got to stop drinking. I mean, lately... Well, she becomes violent when she's had a few too many. Violent? Yes. I mean, she wants to kill me, Peyton. She's already taken a knife to me. A knife? I had to fight for my life. No. Come, Come please. Please believe me. Sometimes late at night after I've gone to bed... She, she gets up and she very quietly hits the bottle. Now, one night, if she's drunk enough and if I'm asleep, and if she gets into that murderous mood... Kid, you really do have a problem. Will you help me, Peyton? Well, I'll... Uh, I'll try, Barry. I'll see what I can scare up. Talk about the sword of Damocles, that lethal weapon that hung suspended by a hair... Our friend Perry seems to have a similar arrangement with a bottle of liquor. On the face of it, he might benefit by two pieces of advice. First, hide the whiskey. Second, become a very light sleeper. However, there's a third possibility. But for that, we have a third act. It unfolds shortly. we are told, must imitate life. But more and more in our society, life imitates art. Actors who play doctors on the screen are often solicited for medical advice. Classically, it has been the actor's task to create an illusion. But now, he actually creates reality. Well, now, reality and illusion may become all mixed up, even for an actor. Perry Stanhope, the very good actor, is asleep somewhere on the borderline of consciousness and slumber. Is he dreaming or is it real? Is a woman actually approaching his bed with a knife in her hand? Is it a dream or has she actually raised the knife high above her head and plunged it down, deep down into his heart? Here, I'll give you a Western sandwich, a stack of wheat, and two poached eggs. You got it? I got it. What do you ask? Can I always have it? Oh, sure. It's just lately you've been, you know, worried about things. Oh, by the way, this guy Joe, the one you got it in for? Yeah, the man's a criminal, a killer. Well, you know what? He's gone. Yeah? He got his. He won't be around no more. Is that so? Well, I mean, not... No, exactly. But the fellow that plays him, this uh, Perry Stumble. Yeah? The guy was killed last night. He was? I just heard it on the radio. He was 
stabbed to death in his sleep. Why are you telling me this? Oh, I don't know. I thought you might be interested. I was only interested in justice. And now it's all over. What is all over? Joe killed Margot, and now Joe has killed himself. But Joe was not killed. He wasn't? No, Irma, for crying out loud, an actor was killed. An actor named Perry Stan. Is that a fact? Well, this afternoon, you just tune in Crossroads, and you'll see there's no more Joe. He's dead. I'm uh, afraid it's my fault, Sergeant. Your fault, sir? Yes, yeah, Sergeant Freeman. I, uh, I think maybe I could have prevented how. Uh, well, his wife, Eleanor, had become a heavy drinker when she was drunk. She, uh, she wanted to kill him. And how do you know this, Mr. Forsyth? Well, he told me. Perry told me. He said she had already picked up a knife in a drunken fury and attempted to... To stab him. When was this? About a week, ten days ago. And why do you say it's your fault? Well, he said the thing that could sober her up would be a job, and he asked me to try to to get her one. Oh, and you did not. Well, I tell you, maybe I I really didn't believe him. I don't know. I mean, what he asked of me wasn't easy to do. But maybe I didn't try hard enough. She uh, actually tried to stab him? Sergeant, she hated him. She held him responsible for her, uh, well, her downfall. Uh, Mrs. Stanhope, on at least one occasion, you were heard to threaten your husband. I just... This? Yes, you were at the studio with your husband. You were on your way out, and you said, if I stay here one more minute, I'll kill you. Then you added, I'll probably kill you anyhow. Uh, don't you remember saying that? I... I'm angry. Did you say it? My whole world had collapsed. Did you say it? You don't know how I felt. Did you say it? I didn't mean But it. you said it. There's so many times when you... We say so many things. Did you uh, ever pick up a knife and try to kill your husband? No. Think carefully, Mrs. Stanhope. Your husband reported such an incident. I don't remember. Then uh, that's not the same answer as no. I... You see, I... I've been drinking a great deal more than is good for me. And when I reach a certain point... Yes? Sort of blackout. I just don't remember what I do or say. Then it is possible that you could have reached that point last night and murdered your husband. No. Why not? You just admitted you don't know what to do when you're in a certain state. I couldn't do anything that's against my basic principles. Well, what are your basic principles, Mrs. Stanhope? I truly believe I am not capable of committing murder. But you already tried to. And only your husband's superior strength oh. saved his life. Well, that's if you believe Peyton Forsney's story. Should I doubt it? Why would he lie to me? Because he hates me. He was the one who got me fired from the lead on Crossroads. Oh. Well, that's not the way he tells it. Well, naturally. Actually, it was the client who wanted you out of there because of your drinking problem. That's a lie. I spoke with the client, Mr. Williamson. He corroborates Mr. Forsney's story. Don't you see? It's a plot. A plot. So they're all against me. So they're all against me. That's why they murdered my darling Perry, because he knew the truth. He would have exposed them. Mrs. Stanhope, you really don't believe that, do you? Oh, where were you last night? I was home in my room. I see. What do you see? Perry and I... You didn't share the same bedroom anymore? Oh, hell, do you? No. Things were going very badly between us. Yes. And I just stayed in my own room. All night? I think so. I don't remember. You don't remember? I was drinking and I just 
don't remember. You don't remember walking into his room where he was lying in his bed, fast asleep, and plunging a knife into his heart. I don't remember. Well, what'd you do with the knife afterwards? Did you try to get rid of it? Did you go out? Did you walk to the bridge or drive to the bridge? Did you throw it over the side into the river? I don't remember. You remember a desire to kill him. I... Do you? Please, Mrs. Stanhope, face the truth. The truth? Did you have an urge to kill him? The truth. The truth. Did you hate him because you believed he had betrayed you? It was true. He had betrayed and me. And didn't you start drinking because of him? How do you know? I've spoken to your friends. Oh, friends. I have no friends. But is it true? Did you start to drink because of your husband? Yes. You hated him? No. No. I was afraid of him. Afraid of him? Why? Oh. No. You can never hope to understand. You could help me understand. Because I was now living in his world. I, I don't understand. Well, I said you wouldn't. My world was Shakespeare, Shaw, Ibsen, Chekhov. That world is gone. Today it's his world. Quick study, the automatic response. I, uh, I saw you as Hedda Gabler. Did you indeed? Oh, aren't you being a snob? <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. I also saw you as Margot in Crossroads. I know what you're talking about. Oh. God bless you. <laughs> I'm not alone. No, Mrs. Stanhope. You are not alone. You have these devils inside you. Yes. And you've got to get rid of them. I know. And you killed him, didn't you? I must have killed him. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. The judge, the jury, they'll understand. Will they? I'm sure. You'll be given treatment instead of punishment. No. I deserve to be punished. Oh, you have been already. You're an actress. You can survive. You, you'll return to the stage. I can promise you what I was unable to promise, Perry. Sergeant Freeman, I promise you I will never take another drink. I know you keep that promise. Well, what is there that I must do now? Uh, you must uh, make a statement. Statement? Well, actually, it's a confession. A confession? Yes. You just tell us what happened in your own words, and uh, Officer Pembroke here will take it down in shorthand. See, uh, a confession... Mea culpa, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Hey, Irma, you see the paper this morning? Why would I want to see the paper? Well, there is a story. Oh, listen, that... what's in the paper? Violence, misery. Uh, was that order of eggs supposed to be easy over? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You know this uh, Perry Sistanhope? The guy who played Joe in Crossroads. The one that killed your friend Margo and then got killed himself. Listen, don't forget you got to order at least two fresh hands Wait, today. Wait, they got the damn who killed him. They what? Yeah. They, they caught her. It was his wife. She confessed. But... But... Hey, well, no, what is it? She couldn't confess. What do you mean she couldn't confess? Because she didn't do it. But how do you know she didn't do it? Because I, I did it. I heard not. Hand me the paper. Irma, what did you just say? I said I killed him. Oh, baby, you don't want to talk that way even as a joke. Carlos, I killed him. Irma, you're quoting the paper. You're reading with your very own eyes. This dame, his wife, Eleanor, she admits But it. she's lying. Why would she not? Maybe it would... To protect me. Why would she want to protect you, Irma? Because she played Margot. Yeah, but... And we were friends, don't you see? She was closer than a sister to me, and she would do anything to help me. That's the kind of woman she was. Look, Irma, may maybe you're tired. Uh, listen, I'm going down to the police station. What for? To confess I killed Joe. But you see this knife, my special slicing knife? This is the knife I used. I sharpened the point. Oh, no, I'm Irma, sorry to leave but... in the middle of the morning, Carlos. But justice is more important. And 
And uh, you say uh, you killed him, Miss... Uh, Miss... Uh... Burkett. Irma Burkett. Uh-huh. Uh, why? Because I hated him. He murdered Margot. Margot? Oh. Oh, I see. And I just couldn't let him get away with it. It isn't starting. She could never... Uh, please, please. Just uh, let her continue. I believe in justice, and that's why I can't leave an innocent woman pay for what I did. Yes, I understand. So I'll take what's coming. But I can't let her go to jail for something she didn't do. I have to do what's right. Yes, I understand. Now, here's the knife I used. You'll find my fingerprints all over it. Oh, I'm sure we will. You don't believe me, do you? Oh, I believe that you're sincere. I know how you felt about Margot. I felt that way myself. She was a saint. An angel. I also wanted to kill Joe. Did you? Oh, yes, yes. Miss uh, Burkett, uh, will you let me make a confession? One night, I dreamed I killed him. You did? Oh, it was so real. It must have been just like your dream. But I went there to his apartment. Yes, I know. I, I went there, too, in my dream. But I killed him. You, you wanted to kill him so badly. I understand. I felt that way. But I didn't kill him. And you didn't kill him. No matter how convinced we may be. But I... And you know why? We, uh, you and I, we are incapable of murder. That's because we believe in justice. We I don't... are moral people. But that doesn't mean our blood doesn't boil. So, you see, what we cannot allow ourselves to do in real life, we perform in a dream. That's why your dream was so real. That's why you really and truly believe you killed him. Then it was a dream? <laughs> of course. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, will you uh, take Miss Burkett home? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Hey, Irma. What do you say, baby? Huh? Let's go. It was a dream, Carlos. It was only a dream. Was it only a dream? Who really killed Joe? Or Perry Stanhope? Was it Margot? Or call her Eleanor? Was it Irma? I don't know. I would warn many of my fellow actors, however. Moderate your thespian villainies. There are people out there who really believe you. I shall return shortly. Where does reality end and illusion begin? For that matter, where does illusion end and reality begin? Or why do we insist that the two are separate entities? Maybe there is no such thing as either, but only a mixture of each. Illusion and reality. These are the basic raw materials of our show. And we weave a new design seven times each week. Our cast included Terry Keene, Ann Williams, Mandel Kramer, Ian Martin, and William Griffiths. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.